everyone, my name is Yakshmi Priya and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be using the Bockingford uh, cold press watercolor paper. Thank you to the viewer that mentioned uh, what the knot in bracket stands for. It is the cold press paper. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to be using this paper, which is a cold press paper, so it has some texture to it. And I'm also going to be using um, koi watercolors. Now, I have used the 48 set uh, for previous um, videos, which you may have seen. And I've done this uh, palm tree uh, that was done on the Bockingford uh, hot press paper. And then I did these flowers on the XL, Canson XL watercolor paper. But that was with the 48 set of the koi watercolors. And um, yes, this was the uh, Bockingford uh, hot press paper that I used for the palm tree in the sunset. Now I'm going to be using in today's video the Koi Watercolor 72 set. Now just a dis disclaimer, all these products I've purchased myself. I'm not sponsored by any brand or any product. I just I always am on the lookout for products to see if I find something that I like better or maybe something that will make a good addition to what I currently use. So um, when you open up the, uh, the set, uh, it does have um, little sliders on the side to open. And you can see I've done a swatch of all my colors. I usually always, always re-swatch the colors. I don't rely on the colors on the back. Although they are similar, I prefer to have my own swatch in my palette. Um, I even do it for the color pencils as well. And then it's got a palette on the side that you can use to uh, mix all your colors. It does come with uh, two water brushes, but I prefer not to use the water brushes. I use my uh, regular watercolor brushes because um, the water brushes for me uh, release too much of water and I want to have control of the amount of water I want. So I prefer using uh, regular brushes. All the supplies I'm using will be listed in the description box uh, down below. So I start off with a, um, a wash of blue now i'm using um with this set the 72 set it does come with a lot of different blues and a lot of different greens as well so it has that variety for me so i don't have to mix all the colors uh, that i need i can just directly pick it up and or pick it up from the palette and start painting so that is the benefit of having a larger set of colors however having a fewer colors or a limited color palette or a smaller set uh, means that you learn how to mix colors so you are able to create the colors that you need without having to um, just rely on on the colors there so if you need a specific blue you can create it yourself and it teaches you or forces you to learn how to mix colors which is very important for any artist so i would always say it's good to have a large set uh, if you just want to just get start painting but um, if you want to learn proper color mixing and be able to mix any color at any time with any paint, I would highly recommend, recommend using smaller sets. Although a larger set is always a um, definite must have in, um, for any artist. So um, you can see I'm just doing a scene here. This is a island uh, scene. There's some mountains in the background. Um, there's a lot of foliage trees um, that's on the island. And it is going to be, uh, as I'm working forward, I'm going to bring in the water. And then in the right closest to the viewer, there's going to be shallow waters where you can see the underwater and you can see the uh, sea turtles uh, or sea turtle underneath the water, the rocks under the water as well. So um, this is just, I wanted to show you what you can do with these paints. And you could do this with the smaller sets as well. You don't have to have the set. It just, it makes it easier and quicker because I don't have to mix a lot of colors. Although I did do some mixing, for a certain um, turquoises that I needed, but um, for most of it, I had the colors on hand. So now, um, what what I like about this is because this paper is a bit textured, um, it is um, able to give me a little bit of texture to my water when I'm applying uh, my uh, paint and my water. So you can see I'm using my brush just to apply various colors now this I'm just trying to get the look of the underwater with the various corals and because it's a shallow area of the water there's a lot, a lot of uh, turquoises, blue greens, aquamarines, teals, there's a lot of colors going on besides the blue. So I am drying my layers between uh, with a hairdryer. 
um, I would have um, or I would advise to tape down your paper but as you can see uh, the paper is not warping that badly even though I am using a lot of water and paint. So uh, now you can see I'm working on the underwater uh, side of things where you can see all the shallow water uh, where you can see the sea turtle and then I'm going back and forth working on the um, water in closer to the island and now I'm starting to work on the reflections of the trees and the foliage into the water. So with watercolor you got to be a bit careful when you're doing reflections um, because the paper if it is wet and wet it can mix and become muddy or it will just become a murky and blotchy and you won't be able to tell that it is a reflection so be careful of that. So it's good to dry your paper quite a bit as you're working. Um, I'm also just uh, touching up on my sky and I did retain some of the areas of the white for the clouds and I'm just adding hints of blue to the clouds um, and a little bit of a slight gray just to give the clouds a bit of dimension and depth and then now you can see I'm working on the water again as well as the reflections of the island. And also uh, the islands have got a variety of different foliage, different trees. I'm taking into consideration all the different branches, the barks, the, the uh, leaves, the sand, the rocks, all of that in, I'm taking into consideration as I'm working on this piece. Now I'm just working on uh, the uh, shallow area of the water. You can see I'm just adding a random strokes for shadows and rocks and just for some areas if I'm not happy with it I just blotch it out with a wet paper towel. That's a good thing about this paper you can correct mistakes if the, paper, if the paint is still wet or you can apply water and then uh, blotch it out and that also helps. So you can see I'm still now doing some washes over the shallow area because now I wanted to uh, push it back into the water. So I'm doing uh, washes of uh, different colors of blues just to uh, push that shallow area in and unify everything and I'm also adding some final touches to the uh, darkest areas of the water as well as the sky. So um, like I always say you don't need the largest set um, it's good to have but if you have um, just a, a smaller set like the 48 that's perfectly fine you could have achieved the same painting with that one it's just that I wanted to do a video to show you how the 48 and 72 set I wanted to do videos for each. Um, now over there you can see I'm adding a lot of white. Now that I'm actually using uh, some white gouache for uh, because I don't uh, the the white in the koi watercolors is not very opaque so I needed something a bit more white so I'm using some white gouache. As I said all the supplies will be listed in the description box below but like you, like you can see I'm working uh, section by section and all in all, as I said before, these paints are beautiful paints, beautiful watercolors to have for any artist to have in their collection. And uh, the paper also is a beautiful paper to work with. Very forgiving. You can correct mistakes. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to like and share. Feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.